All right, thanks for watching. And today we want to do something really cool. Because if you remember in calculus, you usually integrated a function from A to B. Namely, you had this curve graph, f of x, and you found, if you want, the area under the function f and over the uh, interval a comma b. So, in other words, what you did, you found this shaded region. So again, want to find abbreviated as WTF. Now, an interval, you can think of it as a straight line segment. This time what we would like to do is integrate not on a straight line segment, but on a squiggly curve. So here's a rule. Given a curve C and a function f of x comma y, I'll draw a picture in a second. What we want to do is still find the area under the function f and over the curve c. We want to find area under f and over c. So again, assume in this case we're in the xyz plane. XYZ. And this time, as I mentioned, instead of having a straight interval, we have this curvy thing C, maybe like this. And we have some function, think of it as a magic carpet, floating on top of this curve. Maybe this surface here. So F of X comma Y. And what we would like to find is the area, if you want, of the fence where the height is f and the base is c. In other words, we would like to find the area of this fence. So again, same idea. The base here is c, before it was the interval a comma b, and the height is still f. So, if you want intuitively, think of f as a cake, and you're slicing the cake along the curve c. And then you get a very thin slice, which basically becomes an area, and whatever we'll calculate, we'll calculate the area under this fence. Okay? And so, what is the notation? Well, here we have the integral from a to b, of f of x dx. This time, what this is, it's still an integral, but this time over the curve of your function f of x comma y, and to specify that it's a line integral, you do it with ds. So, not like Nintendo ds or anything, but you know, d segment if you want. So again, uh, yeah, that's what it is. And today, I will just do two examples. And in the next video, I will explain you where the formula comes from. So first of all, again, just for you to get some you know, practice and some intuition. So let's do the following. Let's calculate the line integral of f, uh, no, of the function, in fact, x squared y ds where C, in this case, is the quarter circle x squared plus y squared equals 4 and in the first quadrant. And as I said, my convention is, unless otherwise specified, things are in the counterclockwise direction. So, again, I'll try to draw a picture in a second, but what's the idea? Just like our double and triple integrals, it always starts with a picture, some kind of inequality, or we'll see parametrization, and a calculation. So, 
as I say, I call it the Payam method, picture inequality math. So, in this case, the curve is just a quarter circle. So let's show us first draw a picture. So it's, this time it's again a curve in the xy plane. And what I said was it's just a quarter circle, x squared plus y squared equals 4, but in the first quadrant. So this is, if you want, your base C. And again, it's some x squared plus y squared equals 4, so of radius 2. That's first. Second of all, and again, it's not quite clear why I do, do this, but I'll explain in another video, parameterize your curve. But again, what's the idea? Well, C is a one-dimensional thing. We know how to integrate one-dimensional things. So that's why parametrization becomes it so important. It turns this weird curve into a one-dimensional thing. Okay, and for this, I would like again to encourage you to watch another video I've done on parametrizations. So the circle, very straightforward to parametrize, the center is zero, so it's just polar coordinates. So you want to write this in terms of x of t and y of t. And in this case, x becomes 2 cosine of t and y is 2 sine of t. And the bounds are important, so here it starts at an angle 0, all the way to an angle of pi over 2. And then, what do you want to do? You just want to integrate. Again, picture kind of inequality, so in this case, parametrization. And now you want to do the math, and it turns out it's not too bad to integrate this function. All you do, you replace x by xt, y by yt, your bounds by 0 and pi over 2. The only thing you need to know is what the hell is ds is. And let me tell you what it is, and in another video I derive it. Um, so integrate. So use the following fact, and think of it almost as a Jacobian. Because for Jacobian, you had dx dy equals something du dv. Now, the Jacobian, if you want, it's simply ds equals square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. Okay. And using this little fact, we can integrate this. So now, the integral over c, c senor, okay, the, of x squared y ds, what this becomes is the integral over now, the integral 0 comma pi over 2, so notice, in some sense, we're straightening out, straightening out the circle to make it flat, in some sense, of, again, x of t squared y of t. And now ds, I like to remind you, it's square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared and then dt. So again, just to remind you, we just replace x with the parametrization, y with this, and then ds is just this weird Pythagorean theorem kind of thing. All right, and then you do that, so that becomes now integral from 0 to pi over 2. I just erase this, but x was 2 cosine of t square. y was 2 sine of t. And then times square root of what? Well, the derivative of x, which is minus 2 sine of t squared, plus the derivative of y squared, so 2 cosine of t squared, and 
then dt. And then this just simplifies, it becomes integral from 0 to pi over 2. So 2 squared times 2, which is 8, cosine squared of t sine of t. And what this becomes, it becomes 4 sine squared of t plus 4 cosine squared of t dt. And then that becomes integral from 0 to pi over 2. So notice what this becomes is just square root of 4, which becomes 2. So this is just 2. Not dividing, but like this. All this is 2, so times 8, so it's 16, cosine squared of t, sine of t, dt. And then you just you know, integrate that, so minus 16 thirds, I think just cosine cubed of t from 0 to pi over 2. If you're confused, what did I do? I use a u sub, I think u equals cosine of t, and or you can just recognize it's almost the derivative of cosine cubed, but then to get rid of this 3, we need to divide by 3, and the derivative is 3 cosine squared times minus sine, so we need to get rid of it by putting the minus sign, and then you just calculate this, I think it just becomes 16 thirds. So again, this is how you calculate the line integral. So you just uh, replace x by the parametrization. You use ds to be this little thing, which I'll explain in another video. And then notice what happens is the integral just becomes an integral with t. Um, just a couple of small remarks. First of all, how would you even you know, uh, memorize this little thing? So, note, first of all, here's a small mnemonic. Think of it in terms of the Pythagorean theorem. So ds, it's almost like dx, in fact it is, square root of dx squared plus dy squared. So kind of, if you do a small change in x and a small change in y, then ds, what it is, it's a small change in the diagonal and dx, just I'd also think of it in terms of you know, single variable calculus, is dx over dt times dt, so x prime of t times dt. That's how we can have that. And also, I don't know if that looks familiar to you, but this expression you may have seen before when you calculated the length of a curve in multivariable calculus because the length of the curve is simply integral from something to something of precisely this factor. x prime of t plus y prime of t squared dt, again, if you want from a to b, and that's also where the factor appeared. And in fact, you can think of this as a little bit of a generalization, because this is the same thing as integrating the function one with respect to this factor. This time we're integrating the function f with respect to this factor, which is why it gives you the area under the function f. And let me just check something. Uh, all right, I think this is, uh, and finally, maybe let me just do a couple other things. So just to make this video complete, as I said, another interpretation is that the line integral is the area under a fence, but also, uh, there, if you like physics, there are other interpretations, namely, if f is the force, so may the force be with you, then the line integral is just the work done. Work done by the uh, force f, on the curve C. And also, if you like physics, the last remark is that should also remind you of uh, maybe mass. So in other words, if F is a density, then the line integral of F dS is just the mass of, let's say, of a wire C. 
So you see, it's pretty powerful stuff. And uh, as I said, maybe next time or something, I'll give one more example and then um, uh, maybe also a little derivation of what's going on. All right, I hope you like this. And if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.